4, reading to verse 21. Jesus is living in Nazareth. He is at the synagogue. This is where he was brought up. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do here also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at, at Capernaum. Capernaum. And he said, Truly, I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel at the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elijah, and none of them was clean was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they had heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurt him, hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. The word of God for the people. Scripture, Jesus was doing so well. His sermon started out so strong. The people were lifting it up. And the listeners were delighted that God's realm of shalom is coming. But they imagine it is for people just like themselves. The Romans will be destroyed. The temple restored to its grandeur. They are willing to accept Jesus on their own terms excited about what he can do for them, for the personal advantage they can claim because he is one of them. They are like people who respond to the needs of the world through the lens of their own personal needs, who tend to reduce all the world's problems to their own problems. We can almost hear them. That Jesus, he's our God. Hey, you know what? That stuff you were doing out there, those miracles, the things we heard about it, you need to do that for us. I mean, come on. We have blind people in Nazareth. We have people that need release. So Jesus, you know you better preach. Welcome home, brother. Do it for us. Yeah, but that's not the future Jesus is bringing. So Jesus responds by casting himself in a different role. He doesn't walk into all that praise about being the miracle worker they heard about, or even the warrior king they were hoping for. He takes upon himself the identity of a prophet. Those listening knew what that implied. The prophets were not known for bringing miracles and good things to the people of Israel. The prophets didn't preach money cometh. The prophets didn't preach God bless Rome. The prophets didn't preach your personal piety put you in a class above others. The prophets didn't define God to your liking. The prophets called people to accountability for their selfishness, for their faithlessness to God, for their lack of justice and mercy towards others. And as soon as Jesus identifies himself in a prophetic role, he has marked himself as an enemy of the status quo. So those people listening knew he was challenging how they defined the sacred. Those listening knew he was challenging how they ordered their lives. Because they remembered the other prophets. 
like Amos, who said, and I'm reading the, from the message translation, woe to you who think you live on easy street in Zion, who think Mount Samaria is the good life. You assume you're at the top of the heap. Well, wake up and get off your pedestal. <laughs> Catastrophe is right around the corner. Woe to those who live in luxury. Woe to those who live only for today, indifferent to the fate of others, who think life is a party held just for them. Woe to those addicted to feeling good. Life without pain. Those obsessed with looking good. Life without wrinkles. They could not care less about their country going to ruin the prophet Amos. And he was run out of town. Prophets, prophets risk death because they dare to tell the truth to people who didn't want to hear the truth. Like the prophet Micah who told the people, listen to this, you leaders of the house of Jacob, you officials of the house of Israel who hate administering justice, who prefer, who pervert the very meaning of equity, who are building up Zion by means of bloodshed, and Jerusalem by means of inequity. Her leaders judge for money. Her prophets prophesy for cash. Even so, don't they all rely on the Lord as they ask, is not the Lord among us? Therefore, because of you, Zion, you'll be plowed up like a field. Prophets did not bring good news. So when Jesus aligns himself with the prophetic tradition, when Jesus lets them know that he saw through their self-serving acceptance of him, when they see that his mission isn't just to serve them, the special ones, the ones born in specific places, the ones who have access to certain places of high standing, the ones who are big tigers, the ones whose families were the backbone of the temple. He's not there for them alone. He states his mission, a mission that points towards the universality of God's family. And they are P.O. <laughs> they are angry, for it disrupts their culture of privilege. They are angry at him for standing in the prophetic tradition that undercuts the theology of military dominance. They are angry at Jesus for standing in the spirit of those who would question their self-serving capitalism inside the walls of governance and religion. And the Bible says, when they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, led him to the brow of the hill which their town was built so that they, the people in the synagogue, might throw him off a cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. Today, this very day, we too are challenged by our preconceived notions of how we understand the realm of God and what it means for our lives. The question for us is, do we dare to stand with the Savior that points us past personal piety toward radical inclusion? Do we 
dare stand for the Savior that challenges the status quo. This dangerous stuff. Do we dare listen to a Savior that tells us that we are all headed in the wrong direction? Do we dare walk beyond the boundaries of where our faith might have placed us in the past? Or do we stand with the crowd and call this blasphemy and seek to throw Jesus off a cliff and to return to something safer? Money cometh. I'm too blessed to be stressed. <laughs> of God, we follow a radical example. And when we fully embrace that radical example, the moral ground beneath our feet will shift. And when the moral ground beneath our feet shifts, we change and we will order our world differently. And then and only then, can real transformation begin. May it be so. Amen. <laughs>